The moment for the S&P 500 to make a decisive move is near. Tomorrow, we will get the latest FOMC rate announcement at 2 p.m. Eastern Time and Jay Powell Presser at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time. And that will be the moment the S&P 500 along with the rest of the market will determine where to go, up or down. So to be prepared yourself, we will look at the recent price action and map out some possible scenarios so we won't be caught with our pants now. Now let's take a look at this chart here. This is the intraday chart of the S&P 500 along with some of the sentiment and in internals. You can see this S&P 500 gap up on open and about 15 minutes till lunch. It uh, made a low of the day and then uh, after lunch, 2 o'clock, uh, we start seeing it uh, uh, making a push upward. And then you see here the last 15, 20 minutes into the bell, there's that op X, a uh, little push on the op X. Now, looking at the up down volume ratio, today was quite an impressive day in terms of buying pressure because it's been holding above that 5 to 1 in favor of the up volume. And also the VIX, even though, uh, you know, in, in face of this uh, positive sentiment on the up-down volume ratio, the VIX is uh, still above that 20 level and sitting at 21.62. That came down quite a bit. I remember a few days ago, it was above 30 and then been hovering around 24, 26 area. So it is coming down, but the market participants are still a little bit fearful here. Now, the put-call ratio also inside of this 0.75 and 1, that's the... Uh, with off uh, zone here. So it is sitting at 0.82. So again, you know, there's uh, uh, market participant are not totally uh, bonker into what's on today, even though with a strong buying pressure. And the uh, AD, the advanced decline, the daily advanced decline, also showing quite a broad market advance today with uh, 1,702 more advancing stock than declining stock. So definitely they are buying almost everything. So. Uh, so internal breath is, is quite impressively strong today on the up-down volume ratio and also on the uh, advanced decline. Now, if you find the content in this video to be informative and useful, be sure to smash the thumbs up and give it a like and help promote this video on YouTube. And if you are new to this channel and like to continue to watch these videos from me, then subscribe. In my last video, I inadvertently have referenced the sector in the S&P 500 to the NASDAQ 100 index. One of my viewers have alerted me to that. So, uh, so I'm going to go do it again on the, uh, the 11th sector in the S&P 500 and reference to the S&P 500. So to begin with, we're going to take a look at the XLK. And here you can see the year to date, month to date, and the week to date percentage gain. And I have put out a video uh, that uh, tell you how to get access to this script and how to install that to your TOS uh, platform along with the ability to put it on your watch list as well. So um, we'll have the link in the description below. So first of all, looking at the XLK, you can see that the XLK recently has kind of underperformed the S&P 500 a little bit, but you can see that uh, since the beginning of the year, it has been outperforming the S&P 500. And here on the healthcare, the healthcare is pretty much flat. You can see that in the last uh, couple of months, you know, ever since the beginning of the year, it's kind of just chopping away, you know. So it's kind of flat, although the price has come down a bit. But relative to the S&P 500, you can say it's kind of flat. And for the discretionary, the discretionary is also sort of flat, although it appears to be coming down a little bit. But you can see the last month or so, it's kind of stabilized and pretty much flat. So it's performing along with the S&P 500, and it is holding this 134.99 support level. And here's the financial. You can see the financial is really crashing down, underperformed the S&P 500 since the beginning of March here, although it was kind of flat at the beginning of the year. But with the recent banking crisis, you know, you can see that it just collapsed. And for the communication sector, you see the communication sector has been outperforming the S&P 500 in the last couple of weeks and also up here at the beginning of the year. And that's primarily due to Facebook, uh, you know, Meta, and Google. And looking at the industrial, you see the industrial is also coming down underperform in March, although at the beginning of the year, it was outperforming the S&P 500 as there was some uh, little bit of a sector rotation going on. And here's the consumer stable. The consumer stable is sort of, you know, you could say as this outperforming the S&P 500 a bit because it is sloping up in terms of the uh, the trend from the beginning of January to the present. 
And on the price basis, you know, in this chart here, it's pretty relatively flat. It didn't go anywhere, right? It's kind of hovering around this 72 area. And the other one that seems to be uh, taking a hit is the energy sector. You can see the energy sector is also underperformed the S&P 500 recently, but at the beginning of the year was kind of flat as well. And the price really came down in the last month, you know, doing, I mean, in March here, you see it came down, booked at 78.50. Uh, 78 Today, we see a little bit of a relief rally and gap up here. So we'll see how long that will last. I see that the energy sector probably had a little bit more downside to go. And the other sector is really taking it on the chin is the real estate. And I believe this is probably the beginning along with the financial, you know, with the banking crisis, the tightening of credit and the kind of stuff. We probably will see a blow up in the real estate uh, sector soon uh, if things keep going the way that it is going. So you see that it is underperforming the S&P 500, although it is holding this 3685 level here. So I think it's just a matter of time before this level gets broken. And the other one is also the material sector. You see the material is also taking a hit uh, underperformed the S&P 500, although it got a little bit of a, a rally today, pop up back above the 7666 support level. So we'll see how long this will hold, because I envision it uh, probably will come down and retrace and, and probably will test the October low. And here's the utility. The utility is also taking a hit recently, although um, you know at the end of uh, February to beginning of March is actually doing quite well relative to the S&P 500 until just recently we see that the utility is taking a little bit of a dive, but the price is holding up and it's still above the 61.96. Let's take a look at Apple on this daily chart of the Apple. The uh, upper range for this weekly expected move is 161 and a quarter and 160.70 or so. And the uh, lower range is 149.40 and 147.50. And as you could see from last week, it bounced off of this 147.80 zone nicely. And uh, right now, it is above this uh, balance area here. So we'll see, would it be able to move up and take out this upper range of the expected move? And if it does, then basically it is uh, that we trace this entire balance area on the upside. And we could see a possible move and maybe coming up to this little bit of a high volume area up at this 168, 170, 172 uh, level here. But if Apple get rejected tomorrow and pushing back down, I mean, below this uh, uh, point of control, this composite point of control here and dip below or into this uh, weekly lower range, then we could see it uh, possibly starting to retrace back all the way down to this lower range of this balance area, this lower half of this balance area down near the uh, 134 area. Looking at Tesla, Tesla, the upper range of this weekly expected moves is between 194.50 and 191.80 or so, and the uh, lower range is uh, 168.50 and 165. And you can see today it actually went above the uh, upper range of the weekly expected move and uh, above this composite point of control, this high volume area here, this high volume node. So tomorrow we'll keep an eye on it to see what it maintain its uh, uh, ground here and stay above this uh, composite point of control and move up, get above 200 and move up to this 214 area and possibly get up to this 230 in the coming days or in the weeks ahead. But if it get rejected and pushes back down below this volume point of control, this composite point of control here, then look for this 180 area, this high volume no to see what it be able to find support and push back up and get back above the uh, point of control. But if it's unable to do so, then look for this 167, 168 level, the lower range of the weekly expected move, and also this low volume area to get tagged. Then we could see Tesla possibly move back down toward this 146, 140 area. And if you'd like to learn how I set up this uh, free volume profile, this fixed range volume profile from TradingView, and how I'll use this to uh, identify these various uh, support resistance zone, then uh, go and check out the video that I put out. And I have the link in the description below to show you how to set it up and how to get access to this free tool in TradingView. Now let's take a look at the E-mini S&P 500, the market profile chart. Remember the last time we uh, looked at this chart, we were saying, watch this balance area right between this uh, 3940 and uh, 
40 40 area you know this balance area and we're saying that uh look for it to uh, come up here if it break this balance area then watch this fomc level the 4073 now tomorrow we're going to get our F fomc announcement what the latest rate high is so it's important to see will it overtake this level and get back above this 4073 and if it does remember we're also saying then look for this balance area up above the 4100 to somewhere around this 4160 area and see what it be able to come up to this balance area now if we get rejected then we're basically are looking for this thing to retrace back down to the other end of this balance area down here 3940 area so that's the key thing to watch for tomorrow now we do have some single print let me uh zoom this in now in today's profile we uh ended up with a poor low here at 4003 and a half and also the uh, point of control is 4018 and three quarter and also there's a little bit of a single print here between 4036 and a half and 4034 and a quarter and also in addition to that we partially filled in some of these single print here from march 7 but there still remain a uh, you know some uh, single print between 4047 and a half and 4043 and a half so keep an eye on these single prints up here to get possibly uh, get filled tomorrow so uh, be aware of that and also the uh, poor low and the poor high down here and also these point of control could be tagged on the downside tomorrow you know so those are the level to keep an eye on from the market profile perspective and looking at this candlestick chart of the e-mini S&P 500 let's start off with the weekly chart here I just want to highlight this range bound of this weekly chart you see back in May of last year it's basically been chopping around ever since within this range between the uh, uh, 4250 4260 area to this 37 30 37 40 so you can see that it is pretty much in this range here kind of chopping around inside of this range and if we do a uh, major move to see what the percentage is you can see that it is been range bound in the in term of uh, somewhere around 12 percent 12 and a quarter percent up and down in this range here and on this daily chart for the ES you can see that it is uh, back up here back testing this trend line now for the week the upper range is somewhere around this uh, 40 78 40 80 area and the uh, lower range of the expected move is somewhere between 38 26 and 37 90 so those are the ranges for the uh, week and as you can see right now the price seems to be sitting right near this uh, composite point of control here and uh, we expect to see what it be able to get above this uh, weekly range and if it does then the uh, next area of uh, potential resistance or the target area will be somewhere between this 4124 and 4150 and the downside scenario is to come back in and dip below this uh, 4000 area and come down uh, dip below this low volume zone here get underneath the uh, 3970 and work its way back down toward the uh, 3825 area 3850 area here to the lower range of the expected move now let's take a look at the ETF uh, starting with the Russell 2000 the IWM again taking a look at the weekly chart you can see that it is in sort of a some sort of a range bound uh, right here now one could also say it could be uh, bound up at this upper uh, level here near the uh, 200 but uh, in regardless uh, we could agree that it is uh, sort of in a range bound since last April or so last April May or so so we've been uh, sitting on that uh, this range bound here and let's see what that percentage is and using this level here and we are looking at somewhere around 10 percent so uh, it's been uh, bouncing around that 10 percent and if we uh, take a look at this uh, using this top here then we are talking about maybe about 15 percent or so so it's been just bouncing around this 10 15 percent area and looking at the daily chart of the IWM here's the uh, upper range for the week is between 179.30 and 178.40 then uh, on the uh, lower range is between 164.10 and 162. so right now we see that it is bouncing off the uh, lower range of this uh, you know this balance area of this consolidation area and uh, sitting up here at 176.75 getting close to this upper range so tomorrow with the FOMC announcement either we see it continue to push up uh, and get above this range and if it does then we're basically looking for it to uh, honestly work its way back up to the top of this consolidation area near this uh, 190 or if it come back down then we'd be uh, looking at this possibility of coming back down to this 170 172 
And if it breaks that, then uh, we will see it uh, possibly work down toward this 164, 162, this low range of the uh, weekly expected move. And here looking at the QQQ, the ETF for the uh, NASDAQ 100. On this weekly chart, again, we are looking at this range bound ever since back in uh, April, May timeframe of last year. So uh, let's take a major move and see what that range is. And here we are looking at somewhere around 14% or so. Okay. And so right now it's basically sitting at this range somewhere around 312 and uh, 369. We're going to see will it break above this range in the coming days or will it retrace back down to the lower boundary of this consolidation area or this range bound balance area. And looking at the daily chart of the QQQ, as you can see, the upper range of this weekly expected move is between 317 and 315.70, and the lower range is between 295 and 291.50. And you can see that the price action is getting close to this upper edge of this balance area. So tomorrow after the FOMC meeting, if the announcement is positive, then we can see the price come up and take out this upper range and possibly push through to the uh, 320 level. Now, if it get rejected and pushed back down, then look for a move back down to this uh, composite point of control, which is in confluence with the lower range of this weekly expected move between 295 and 291. Then if it dip below this composite point of control, we could see it work itself back down to the uh, lower edge of this balance area around 270. Now let's take a look at the SPY, the ETF for the S&P 500. As you can see on this weekly chart, again, we have this range bound movement here for the uh, SPY and also occurred back in April, May timeframe of last year. And let's take a look at what that major move is. That percentage of this range is basically about 10%. So we could uh, do a couple of major moves and see where it might lead if it breaks down. So right now we are going to use this uh, Fibonacci extension tool here and do a little bit of a major move. Assuming this is a bear flag, so we would uh, expect it to break down to below so we're just going to do a little bit of our approximation of where that uh, level is and then we just do a little bit of a major move and this is approximately 80 percent which i use 0.78 on the fibonacci retracement and that brings it down to 334 335 level and 100 percent major move will be somewhere around 312 so definitely below the uh, pandemic uh, uh, high and also if we just measure this range and do a 1x extension then we would uh, be doing this here. Let me uh, move this over here, and we're going to shift this down to this point. So uh, then again, uh, looking at the 80%, approximately 80% will be 340, right? Just a bit above the uh, pre-pandemic uh, high, and then the 100% uh, will be 331. So depending what you uh, you know uh, how you want to interpret this range bound area on the downside, is it a bear flag or is it just a, just a consolidation area with a one x or two x extension? So those are some of the downside level to uh, watch. And on the daily chart, we see that the upper range for this week's expected move will be uh, between four hundred three and four hundred two, and the lower range is somewhere between three seventy eight and three seventy five. You see right now it is sitting right above this composite point of control and getting close to this upper range here. So depending on what happened tomorrow with the FOMC rate announcement, we could see this upper range get uh, taken out or uh, it will get rejected and get below this uh, composite point of control and fill today's gap and start moving back down to this uh, 380 area into the uh, lower range of the expected move. Then it also could put it in to the uh, lower bound of this consolidation area, this value area and if it breaks then we're basically looking down at these possible you know major move using either the uh the, the range extension or the bear flag scenario depending which scenario you would like to uh, keep watch on so tomorrow the fomc announcement is the moment that we've been waiting for and with the recent bank crisis it makes it that moment so we're going to see what happened would it break out of this range or would it break down from this range and that will be the critical decisive move for the market since it's been range bound for the last 10 months or so. And I think it is the moment for the market to make a decisive move in one direction or the other. Thank you for watching.